welcome to another life-changing episode on Rusted Up Garage. As you can see here, we have a new project. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail about this project. I don't own this project. Okay, This is actually um, someone else that owns this. And if you can tell by the cover photo, we have been um, asked to make this baby stop a little bit better. And by doing that, we are going to be installing this C C C P P C P P Classic Performance Products Brake Kit. Okay, he bought it from Classic Industries. Um, it's supposed to come with everything. I don't know. I haven't even looked at the kit. Um, well, I mean, I've opened up my eyes to a little, but I mean, I haven't actually like looked it up. So. I mean, the kit itself ain't bad. It's like under a thousand bucks for the kit. So honestly, I don't think that's unreasonably priced for everything to put um, discs with the master and the booster on the kit. Now, I will tell you that I was thrown a little surprise. Okay, when I was asked to do this in my mind, okay, this will teach you to assume something, people. In my mind, we were going to be converting this over to a master on the firewall and rehanging a brake pedal. I kind of like that kit better. I didn't realize what he actually bought was the kit to replace the single pot up underneath the truck, and you, you maintain the original brake pedal and all that assembly. Now, that's really not a big problem for most cases either way. The problem that I have found with this one is he's done a conversion on this. This has an LS in it, um, automatic transmission. He's done a lot of work to it, so make it more drivable. The issue is the exhaust pipes on the left side are in the way of the master. Yeah, that's great. And the aftermarket transmission cross member is in the way of the brake booster. So, like all of our project here at Rusted Up Garage, we can't just buy a kit and bolt it in something. Everything needs to be modified. But, I mean, it's all good. Um, a lot of you guys who have these trucks, if you want to go this direction with it up underneath to keep the firewall clean, um, and th this may work out good for you. Uh, it's just going to require a little more work, which, I mean, we like cutting stuff up. So um, we're going to go through the kit real quick, and then we're going to get on the truck. I don't want to wait too long, but I kind of want to show you what's in the kit so you kind of know what to expect. Obviously, dinner plates, okay? I mean, that's the whole goal here, right? They do box everything up really, really nice. I don't know about the instructions. I haven't read them all yet. I've looked at them like this. It looks nice. Um, it comes with the, uh, the, the bleeder kit. That's, that's handy. Uh, Let me throw this over here. So it does come with the proportioning valve. So you would have your fronts, and they come with a cap, so I guess um, the way the brakes were done on this, we can't do it this way. We're going to actually run two fronts. But if you had coming out of the original pot one coming out for the fronts and then splitting them in the front, you could technically come off from one of these. But the way it was done is kind of weird how it was one of the fronts are coming off the rear and the other front's coming off the master. So the brake lines are going to have to come out, unfortunately. Um, and then obviously the rear goes here. So you've got the proportioning valve. Uh, the old, you know, resetter thing if it slams over. Uh, the brake switch is not part of this. There's no brake warning switch on this. Obviously, it's going to have vacuum, which would be nice. That would be handy. Uh, and it's just a regular, you know, stainless pot. So this right here bolts, will bolt in right here to where the original single is at. So the problem is, is like I told you, the single is right here, right? His exhaust is running right here and his transmission cross member is running right here. So everything needs to be moved. I gotta slide the exhaust down, I gotta move this cross member forward to make all this work. And then the original brake pedal just bolts to here. And you know, you push it and you give her the old brakes and it just, boop, boop, 
beep, 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 beep. So, I mean, it's a pretty simple system. Looks pretty decent. Obviously, some instructions that we need to go over at some point. Obviously, we gotta do some bleeding, and we'll just quickly look at this kit and get to work. Oh, it comes with, these are the hub spacers, it comes with the bolts, it comes with the brackets for the brakes, it comes with the wheel studs. So here's all that. I'm just gonna leave that open because we're gonna need all these parts anyway. It does come with new front brake hoses, which is nice. Uh, And this kit would be a lot of parts. So it comes with a set of bearings. I don't know what these are. For bearings, they say pro on them. They're pro bearings, it says, it says so. Um, obviously caps, these would be the centrics to get the bearings to the right size. The hub, so it's basically like the um, the 55 volts kit we did. Um, there's a different set, so I guess if you have two different versions, you can cap them because they have caps in this one and caps in this one. So I'm assuming two different styles is for that. Then you obviously have your new hub assembly. You see your bearings right on this. So we'll be getting rid of everything there. And this is probably the other one. Yep. So we've got two of those. This is the heavy part of this box, I'm assuming. And then in here. I really wrap the crap out of this stuff. Caution. I'm not really sure what that's for. Honestly, I think that was just part of the packaging. So your brake line obviously goes here. It comes with the brake pads and converts it over to a regular Chevy style. Newer style, Chevrolet. So, oh, that's it on all that. So there really is, it, honestly, the front part don't look too bad. Uh, as I said, it's very much like the 55. And I'm gonna run through the instructions here and uh, so you guys don't have to and do with the assembly. So I guess next what we gotta do is get on the, oh, I'm sweating. We gotta obviously pull the front wheels off from it. And then once I get the front wheels yanked off from it, we'll get some light in here and I'll show you guys the disassembly process. We'll get all this disassembled, get the new dinner plates on the front, get all that ready to obviously we gotta redo the lines. Actually, I might be able to reuse this one line. That side, definitely, I can't. Um, but we'll see what I can reuse. So I don't, you know, the more we can save him, the better. And then, I don't know what we're going to do with the rear. I'm hoping them bleeders open. <laughs> but, okay, Zach, let's, uh, let's, get her, uh, let's get her apart. Well, ladies and gents, you can see we removed on the tire. And if you're ready to retire your cereal bowls for some dinner plates, this is definitely where you want to be. The front end of this truck is pretty much stock from what we can tell. There has been, I mean, they've replaced some front end parts. They've done a lot, the guy's done a lot of work to it. Um, he really has. It's a, it's a pretty nice rig. It could use a few things here and there, but I mean, can't they all? But we're gonna get at it and we're gonna remove these bad boys to install those bad boys. Now, I will say, I'm gonna talk as I'm working. I did do the other side already, because most any good YouTuber does that. Because we did run into a few problems. I know, you're thinking, why would you run that up through, I don't whatever, whatever. Um, we ran into a few problems with the kit. 
But we worked through it. Oh, you're killing me, Smalls. Killing me. Um, and I'm going to show you what them couple issues are because they're not stated in the book at all. Big surprise. But taking it apart is relatively simple. It's just nasty. So when you're done, your tools and hands are going to look pretty freaking disgusting. Even with rubber gloves on. The nice thing is we're replacing all of this. So the threads are a little bunged up on the end on the other side too. I don't, I'm not sure why. Maybe the cap or something. But these old units used use this. So you got this piece right here, right? That goes on. It's kind of like your inner race because back in the day, if I can get this one off, they run roller bearings. So this guy would actually run here on the inside and then this would run on your outside bearing. And the inner ones are the same way. It, it'd run the same idea, okay? So obviously technology got a little bit better and then obviously got even better with the, you know, with the push-in bearings. So as you can see, there's a sleeve on the inside one as well, because that all, you know, keeps the grease in, in the truck at all times. So uh, she was definitely running grease down into the uh, everywheres. So one thing we want to do is clean our tools before we touch anything again. Because this grease is pretty much like never sees. Pretty much gets on everything. Like that. I'm just going to give it a wipe because we're obviously going to reuse the shaft because it's part of the spindle. Now that was pretty easy. The next part really ain't much harder. What we're going to want to do is we're going to move the backing plate from the spindle. And part of the spindle is also the arm. So it all kind of gets removed together. I'm going to uh, grab a couple sockets here and we're going to blow this baby apart. enough room to do this. And honestly, I don't wonder if there was enough room. The other side just, yeah, I mean, yeah, we did do it the other way on the other side. Get me back. This may seem like a problem, but it's really not. It's really not a problem. Um, we'll just leave that there for a minute, okay? Up. 
Way to go. You get that on these jobs sometimes. Okay. So here is ooh, right in my old, right in my old glove. So they're actually cracked too. Um, these are, these are done. Yep, these are definitely done. But that removes that. Now I did remove the brake line off from here. That's still up there. Let me go get this taken care of, then I'll be back. As you can see, there's the spindle. Still running kingpins. They're a little loose, but I have a feeling these have been rebuilt. Um, it would require redoing them again and I don't know if they've been if they've been honed properly or not there's a little play in them but um, not enough to to freak out about there was a lot of play in this guy here that I didn't really like but I mean we're just gonna go with it. that's a spindle they did something weird they heated it up real bad right here and flatten these out I don't like that but that's what the kit must have needed to make work I guess I'm not really sure and um, here I'm randomly talking and my mouth's not gonna line up I'm just telling you because I unplugged the microphone so I'm doing this after but what I'm doing here is I am bolting the lower um, uh, steering knuckle onto the spindle the uh, new bolts come with a kit and then uh, the bottom left one there will go on the knuckle and the top two use different bolts. So what I'm explaining here is this is a part of the kit that they didn't give us any information on. If you look at that, you see how it has that wave in it? The wave actually goes to the back. So it's going to wave out like that, leaving room for the caliper. If you put it on the other way, the caliper is going to be way too close to the um, rotor. And you'll have to swap them. So you don't want to do this twice. So make sure if you do this kit, um, you do have that wave goes to the back is how that goes. There's a, no markings, nothing in the literature about any of this. So um, here I'm just bolting this on with the um, supplied hardware, the locking nuts that it comes with. Nothing too special here. Um, the lower one is the longest, the biggest bolt, and that's the one that's going to go through for the um, steering mechanism there. Just give me a minute and you'll see me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bolt it right in there. You just hold on, hold on, here I come. See, I'm bolting that through that and then I'm grabbing the steering section and bolting it all together, just like that. Easy peasy. Again, everything comes with um, lock um, nuts. They're, they're actually pretty good hardware. They came with this kit. Now I'm just going to hammer this down with the uh, impact gun, and then when I'm done with that, I will check it with a ratchet. Here is the hub that's optional. It's an optional part of the kit, okay, which is nice because if you didn't have this, you'd have to drill out. You can see it or not, Zach. you have to drill out that and reuse all of these bearings and all this stuff. But this is the optional taper bearing kit, which I would highly suggest, okay? But it does have a bit of a problem. So when you assemble this, I can just up here. Is this goes on like this, and then this goes on like this, and then these screws bolt this and this together to put the So you see the problem? Okay. So you can start right off with drilling these three out there. I go just the size of a 3 8 so that we can actually bolt this down through all this, and then we put our studs in. So I guess, to the drill.
stuff too. Okay, obviously, big for the back, small for the front. Just like thought. And then this goes on like that. Go ahead and give your. I like a little orange. It's, it's high, uh, high everything, but it is removable. are Chinese so they aren't really any size. And I'll finish slugging these up after. But I want to make sure all the studs get through everything first. So now let's go over to the old stud installer tool. Okay. Now we'll put the old studs in. Now these, look at these crazy little buggers right here. Okay, ain't that just something, huh? It's because it actually grabs the spindle and it goes past the brakes. Kind of weird. Yes. Oh, no, no. Good luck finding one of those. your favorite job of mine, packing the old wheel bearings. I've showed this several times. So I didn't go into great detail, but, you know, you want to keep pulling it in until she squeezes out the top, just like that. Then we'll go up around. Go again. Jump up the seal in. Like that. Nothing to it. I'm going to grab this little girl. And we'll slide him on. Like that. I'm going to grab
we make this? the truck now. Welcome to the old single pot master and uh, you fill it from this little hole right here or through the floor. That's how that works. You can screw this guy and up through here and then the pedal comes from the front and pushes this this way and then they have a T on it and that goes to the front. This goes around to the corner over here comes way over here and then it splits here and goes to the rear and goes to the front. So that kind of explains to me why when I drove it, it seemed more left pedal, left front grabbing, um, because that was getting the fluid first, and then it had to split it with the rears, so it would always grab to the left first. So that explains that to me. Um, I should have split these left and rights up here first and then went to the rear, so when you came on the pedal, it was fronts together, and then to the rear. I mean, I know it all pushed with pressure, but you gotta think about distance. So that left front was getting all the fluid first, and then it was sharing with the rear, so I had to push the rears out, and then once it had enough pressure on the rears, it could push that front one out. So it was plumbed completely wrong. Um, but anyways, we are going to fix that issue. The problem I'm running into, this is what I said, it's been converted, and I gotta fix a couple of these oil leaks while I'm here. This is the aftermarket transmission mount, and that's right where that booster is gonna sit, right up in here in this master. Because you gotta think that's that bracket that, that we showed over there. That booster's sitting right here. And then that master runs out right here. So this exhaust is in the way too. And you see how they bent it real tight here to get into here. So we're gonna take this exhaust out. And then I'm going to end up having to cut it back in here somewhere. And then we're going to have to slide this, and probably I'll cut it here at the exhaust, and try to slide this into here, shortening it, and then add a piece back over here, basically making this back here. So it kicks up right about in here, and then goes in. Kind of what I'm thinking. And then this guy here, depending on what we got for room, but I'm probably going to have to just lob them off right here just lob it right off right here and then put a flat plate over and then put this mount back over here to come back over and grab it. I'm thinking that may work the easiest, but definitely some fabrication to get all this to work again. But it's 
all right. We're not afraid of that. So in a normal application, if this was the original motor and transmission, you wouldn't have an exhaust on this side. You wouldn't have this transmission mount here. So you'd have all this room. But with this conversion they did, they've taken all that room for the underside. Honestly, this one would have been better with a master cylinder up on the firewall. But we're not worried. So I guess we'll pull the exhaust out first because I need that out of my way. And then I'm going to take the brake lines off, let that drip everywhere. And I'll probably just pull all the lines out back to here. We're just going to have to start over, I think. I didn't want to start over, but I think we're going to have to. The front one may work. That one may work. And no, because the master's going to be back and it's going to be too short. Mm -hmm. It's going to be too short. Okay, all the brake lines are going to have to come out and run new brake lines. Okay. The other thing that's going to suck too is filling this thing because it's going to be right in here. You have to like fill it. That's why they give you that bottle with that 180 degree neck on it. It's going to suck. Yeah. I guess we'll bench bleed this one in the truck. It might be easier to bench bleed it in the truck. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, I guess. Let's get the exhaust off, Zach. So now, we did get the unit out. I'm going to show you up in there afterwards here. I mean, uh, throw that there or something. Or maybe the vice press. There we go. Okay, so here is the stock single pot master that it used before. This is what we're putting back in. So this one bolted through right here. This one bolts through right here. So as you can see, all that we're adding to the front of this. So this is the arm that goes up to the brake pedal. This actually goes into the truck. I unhook that. I unbolt that and unhook that. And then I got to unbolt this and, uh, and pull the pin out. And then this shaft needs to go on to here. Okay. Um, it kind of gives you all the instructions, what you need to do here. Put it all back together to adjust the rod, to do all that. So this is pretty simple to we'll walk through that. But now if underneath the truck, let me bring you back underneath the truck. There. Can you see, Zach? All the space? Okay, so the original one bolted right here. It actually had this piece of steel bracket in behind here, and then it bolted through to here. And it sat right here. So obviously the cross member, which is right in the way, hits that booster, and then the exhaust is all hitting all this too. So we're going to end up having to cut this and do all that work. But I'm going to start with, I mean, there's a lot of room. We've got all the brake lines cut out because they just weren't going to work is we'll mount the bracket, get that bolted in where it needs to be, and then we'll work on getting the brake, all that up through, and then get the master all on, um, and then we will uh, bleed the master in the truck. That way Zach can just go up in the truck, he can pump the pedals, I'll run the lines up over, and we'll just cycle it here. But we're not going to do that until after I have all the brake lines ran. Because I want all the brake lines ran, because once I disconnect those, it's going to start dripping. And that would kind of defeat the purpose of all the bleeding we're doing if we just drip it all out on the floor. So um, we'll have all the brake lines ready to be hooked in. And then disconnect them, bleed the master, tie them all back on, and then we start bleeding the rest of the system out. So there's still quite a bit of work left to do. I mean, we have probably, what, a couple hours into the front, probably about an hour or so aside. And then we're going to have a couple hours into this, plus brake lines and stuff. So, I mean, it is pretty... There's, there's quite a bit of labor, even being relatively good at doing this. It's still taking us a pretty good time. But it should all work. It's just a matter of getting um, everything to fit. Just getting a little snug in the, snug in the bug and the rug in here. So. Okay, so here's the transmission mount. Um, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to lob it here and I'm going to extend it backwards. Um, that's going to be the best. So what I'm thinking about doing now is actually cutting it at this angle right here.
Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get a piece of plate of steel here and we're gonna weld that across here and then this is gonna end up going down here like this. Now, that's my plan. So I just gotta get something that's gonna work for all this. So I guess I'm gonna do that and I'll bring you back for some more fun in just a little bit. Okay, so cool that off and then uh, bolt this back in the truck and then tack the new piece on where it needs to go, a couple gussets and we're good to go. Operation exhaust lengthen is done. Now, because again, I showed you this bend, well, this pipe was connected to here, so all of this was slid down. But it's good now. Let's let it cool and now we'll put it back up in the truck. Well, fellas, I don't know where we left off in this video because it's been over a week because um, I had to order parts and the parts took over a week to get in and I lose track of what I'm doing, so I apologize. But I think we showed you how we got all this on um, with the uh, calipers. Now I will tell you we ran into a little bit of an issue with tire with wheel clearance. Um, just stay right here. These are original wheels, so you see how they immediately ramp up in here. They don't go flat at all. So the problem is is they are hitting even though that the the um, Da, 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 da. The manufacturer says they will fit on stock wheels. A little heads up, um, these original drum wheels where they don't go back flat and then come into here, you're going to have rubbing right in here. Okay. So how we had to combat that without changing wheels is we went up and added a three quarter inch wheel spacer. Um, we spaced everything out. Um, I didn't want to have to go that route, but that was the only route. Um, we tried everything else besides changing wheels. Uh, you're going to have to. Uh, there's enough clearance here for all that, so it's not a real big deal. Now, there's still some other things we got to deal with on this truck. Um, not on this time, but uh, future. But we ended up um, having to weld up the exhaust and moving that. I'm going to come on underneath here. I can probably shoot through. Oh, that's good. Okay. So this is the piece we had to add in the middle because we obviously had to move the transmission cross member that way, okay, because it hit right here. And then this angle was right here. So it went right up through here to come across. So we had to move this all down into here and just cut everything loose, slide it down, add a piece in there. But as you see, it tucks up in real nice. I mean, it's a real nice setup. Um, we had to run all new brake lines because none of them were in the right location for this setup. So that was a pretty easy deal. We just rerouted them. Um, the originals weren't even clamped in, so it made it easy to remove. We just unhooked on each end, just pulled them out. I mean, I went back behind. I have, I put clamps on everything. So uh, all the stuff we put back in has clamps everywhere. Exhaust is right back to where it used to be. 
no change there. Transmission mount's good. I can't think of anything else. I think the rest of it's good. I mean, you see all the assembly works really, really well. We bled the brakes. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna, I weren't gonna bore you with bleeding brakes. Overall, I mean, I would say I gave the kit probably an eight out of 10. Seven, seven and a half. It's pretty good. Okay, it's a pretty good kit, but it's not a bolt-on kit. I will say we've had to modify. We've had problems with clearance issues. They didn't um, account for their powder coating, so everything was really tight. We had to grind a bunch of powder coating off to get bushings through and stuff. So just a heads up on that stuff. It's a relatively good kit for the money, but um, it's not just a bolt-on kit. It's going to require a little bit of finesse here and there. But overall, not bad. Um, we did have to move. We moved the fuel pump and stuff on this truck too. Uh, we're ha he's having a lot of problems with the fuel pump getting hot. So originally, the uh, lines came right over top of the exhaust, and then it ran right down the side with the fuel pump in here. So we had some heating issues. Um, so we moved everything. We ran new lines, new filters. We got everything moved over to here. Got it away. Wrapped everything in heat stuff all the way up through the engine. We wrapped all that in heat. So I think we should have solved that problem. Um, so I think we're down to just a few minor things left really uh, on this truck. But the brake kit's pretty good. All that's done. I don't think as much to show you on the top. That's pretty much it. I mean there ain't much else to this kit. Um, overall, not bad. And uh, we'll see how it works here in just a little bit. Probably. And. Uh, I don't know, I'm just mumbling at this point. So we'll bring you guys back for a little joy ride. We're gonna take this thing out real quick in a few minutes and just check, see how the brakes work and compare it to the drums, because I did drive it with drums. And uh, we'll get back with you on our uh, test drive. How's that sound? Well, I lied to y'all, sorry. It just, it didn't work out, okay? We took it out for a quick test drive. Well, not quick, actually. We probably put, I don't know, several miles on it. And it ran phenomenal. Uh, the brakes worked really well. The whole system worked really well. Um, there is a few problems that he knows of, um, like it's starting to get a wheel, a wheel cylinder starting to leak a little bit in the back, and it has some axle seals leaking. But he's going to switch it over to a 9-inch with, with bags eventually anyways. So... This is really just a get by. We can make it drivable, make it so when you hit the brakes, you don't shoot into the other lane. And I mean, I was, I was extremely happy with how it was working. So we brought it back. Um, we did a quick drive, brought it back. I did a quick nut and bolt on it. I tightened all the wheel bearings back up because you know when you run them one time, you want to bring them in, check your wheel bearings. Um, they were a little bit loose. I tightened them up. I re -blood the brakes, double checked everything. Um, it was great. Customer came. Um, looked at it. He seemed to be very happy. He took the truck. So I didn't realize he was just coming this afternoon and just going to grab the truck. So I didn't get to go for a second drive. So you don't get to go with me. But you can pretend, okay? Just pretend you went with me. Um, again, not a bad kit. Um, there are some issues. But overall, um, I was relatively happy. So, I mean, if that's something you guys are into, you know, Trying to put one of them kits on your truck, it's definitely a good starting place. But now we got to get back to this car. Actually, there really ain't nothing on this car. That's you know we put the motor in it. You guys saw that, and uh, we've been driving it. I'm just going to nut and bolt it real quick because we haven't checked the exhaust. We haven't checked nothing since we I, I put in like 200 miles on it since we put the motor back in it. So um, we have a big car show we want to go to this weekend, and uh, so I want to just take a few minutes, double check everything, make sure everything is copacetic, and um, Get this thing ready at the car show. Next week's a big week. We're going to finish up the sheet metal on the 58 next week is the plan. And we are going to um, get that ready to paint. Well, kind of paint. So you're going to want to stick with us. We'll probably have one more quick video of finishing up the metal and stuff. And then after that, Zach is going to be doing some videos on interior painting and we're gonna be clearing the outside a lot of that stuff going on so thanks a lot be sure to subscribe be sure to like be sure to do all that and uh we'll just keep working on old cars and building old cars because that's what we do 
So, and I might be getting another project for the whole channel, you know, because <sighs> I don't have enough. But thank you all for subscribing and watching. You guys have a great night, great day, great afternoon, great weekend. Whenever you watch this, you just be great. Be on the lookout for the next video. Peace out. Thank you all.